This is a Fujitsu Mini Split AC motherboard. It seems to be fine physically, but it is not turning on. I have passed electricity through it. I am going to check how many voltages are passing through its bridge rectifier. The pins in the center are for the AC voltages. I will check the DC voltages first. 302 DC volts are passing through the DC pins. On the second rectifier, 202 DC volts are passed through the DC pins. This means the electricity is passing fine through the rectifiers. Often, if the IPM is bad, the circuit board does not turn on, and we have no idea which component is bad, I will connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative pin of a multimeter with the IPM. 302 DC volts are passing on the positive pin. 11.56 volts are at the W pin. The next pin also has the same voltages. 11.57 volts is also passing on the last pin. This means that the IPM is fine. A fuse is installed in the SMPS circuit. Through this fuse, we will check if this switching IC is working properly or not, because 11 volts are coming at IPM. This means that the SMPS circuit must be working and that is why 11 volts are passing on the IPM. I will check pin number 2 and 3 of the IC with a fuse to see how many voltages are passing through here. There are 303 DC volts here. Pin number 8 of this switching IC is the drain. That is, it is the output pin of this IC. No voltages are passing on this pin. I accidentally touched the probe with the other pin of the IC. And see that the switching IC has turned black from this point. So, right here, it is important that we change this switching IC. I would clean the switching IC before desoldering it because there is a thin layer of silicon on the circuit board, which makes desoldering a bit difficult. To desolder the IC, first I am adding solder to its pins with the help of soldering wire. This will desolder it easily. Now through the IC holder, I will pull this IC out of the circuit board. Getting this IC out is getting a bit tricky, so a good technique for this is I'll hold the IC holder pressed into the IC. I won't leave the IC holder, and let's rotate the circuit. Now I will gently heat the IC pins with a soldering iron, and look, the pins are starting to go out. We have taken the IC out this way, so it is a good technique. This is the old IC with white writing on it, which is top 243 pn. On the left is the new switching IC. After replacing the IC, I have now powered the circuit board. Let's check the voltages on the switching IC again. I will connect one probe of the multimeter to the fuse and the other pin to the number 2 and 3 pins of the IC. The multimeter is showing us 320 DC volts on these pins. The voltages are slightly higher on these pins than before, which is fine. So, is this switching IC switching because we can't directly see the voltages at pin number 8 through the multimeter? We need an oscilloscope for that. I will attach one multimeter probe to the ground pin of this capacitor. And I will check voltages by connecting the other probe with diode number 55. 15.39 volts, the multimeter is showing here. This means that this IC is switching on. Also, let's check the next part of the circuit whether the voltages are correct here or not. So here is another diode mounted where the multimeter is showing 15 volts, and the cathode of this diode has 14.75 volts. There is a slight voltage drop. A Zener diode is mounted next to it. This is an 8.2 volt Zener diode mounted in reverse bias. That means that any number of volts greater than 8 is passing behind, so they will cross from here to the cathode. 6.45 volts is coming to this pin. On this diode, we are getting 5.8 volts. So we're getting 5 volts at pin number 4 of the IC, which is its feedback pin. That means it is working properly. Pin number 1 of this IC is for overcurrent. For some reason, if the voltages are correct and the current is getting high, then this pin turns off the entire circuit board. The four resistors mounted here are half megaohms resistors. So 2.6 volts are passing across these resistors, which means that pin number one is also perfectly fine because if the current increases here, the voltages also increase. If the current increases at pin number one of the IC, the entire IC will shut down, eventually turning off the entire circuit board. 
Now, I will check the voltages from the other side of the circuit board. I am checking capacitor number 66 to see how many volts it has. 8.8 .8 volts are across the capacitor, which is fine. I am going to check the voltages across capacitor number 65. 13.9 volts are on this capacitor, and it should be 12 volts on this capacitor. These are a bit high, I will tell you further if these high voltages cause damage or not. Now next voltages, I will check on capacitor number 69. This capacitor has negative voltages, so minus 9.11 volts coming in here, which is fine. After that, I would check for 15 volts, probably on the capacitor, on capacitor number 64. So 15 volts are coming across this capacitor, which means that all the required voltages on this circuit we need are exactly right. Now, I will check the voltage on the 7805 IC. The multimeter is showing 5 volts at its output pin, and this IC is showing 8 volts at its input pin. This means that the SMPS is working fine, but the motherboard is not turning on at all. Normally, when the circuit board is fine, the microcontroller checks all the inputs of the circuit board, and it happens so fast that we don't even know when it happened, and then it starts its next functions. Now, I will measure the DC link of this circuit board. So to check this I have to connect one probe of a multimeter to the ground. So the ground is also present on this soldering pad, apart from this, we can also take the ground from another point, so for now I will take the ground from here. So on this resistor, I will check what the voltages are, so about 3 volts here is what the multimeter is telling us, which is perfectly fine and we wanted the same number of volts on this resistor. As the currents and voltages increase here, so will on this resistor. This lets the microcontroller know that all functions are working properly. The DC link voltages are fine but are they reaching the microcontroller or not? So we will check that. So on pin number 8 of the microcontroller, I will check this. If you work on a microcontroller, do it very carefully because if the two pins of the microcontroller are connected while checking it, then this microcontroller will be dead. I have connected the probe to pin 8 of the microcontroller. It is getting a bit difficult because the pins of the microcontroller are very close. 3.1 volts is present on this pin 8 of the microcontroller, which means that the DC link voltages are reaching the microcontroller. DC link voltages are generated later but AC link voltages are generated earlier. To check the AC link you can see that there are two resistors, and these are other two resistors attached. The first two resistors are connected with phase and the second two resistors are connected to the neutral in the circuit board. Let me show you its voltages. I set the multimeter to AC volts. I would place the red probe at the beginning of the first two resistor pins, and so I'll put the black probe at the beginning of the other two resistor pins. 224 volts are available here. All these resistors have a value of 194 kilo ohm so the voltages across their opposite pins are divided. So let's check the voltage on these pins. So about 111 volts are present here on these pins, which are half. So let's check the output voltages at the last pins of these resistors. So at the output, we are getting 2.2 volts. We can also check their voltages with DC ground. I will set the multimeter to DC voltages. I will connect one probe of the multimeter to the ground. So we are getting 1.1 DC volts at the output pin of the resistor. But here it is better to check the voltages in AC volts. The 2.2 volts AC we were getting at the output of AC link resistors goes to these two resistors. Both of these have a resistance of 22 kilo ohms. These voltages are further fed into this IC at pin numbers 9 and 10. Number 9 is inverting, and 10 is the non-inverting pin of this IC. This IC is a ground sense amplifier which is a 4-channel IC and through which this IC is functioning. This IC requires voltages to operate, so the necessary volts for this IC to operate are positive and negative. I'm talking about negative voltages, not ground. So let's see how many negative voltages. I am taking the ground here to check out these negative voltages. At pin 11 of the operational amplifier, we get negative voltages. Pin number 11 of this IC is connected to this capacitor. You can see negative 9.11 volts are shown on the multimeter. And it's important voltages for that. Positive voltages are then required. The main supply is on pin number 4 of this IC. There are 15.39 voltages coming on this pin. And these voltages are essential for the operation of this IC. Without these voltages, the operational amplifier will not work. Now let's talk about the outputs of this IC. The input is on the pin numbers 9 and 10 of this IC which is channel number 3. So, its output is at pin number 8 of the IC. It goes from pin 8 of the IC to channel number 2 in the IC. 
in which the input pins are number 5 and 6. The output of channel number 2 goes to pin number 7 in this IC. At the 7th pin let's check the voltages. Negative 1.7 volts are on this pin. So I will put the second probe of the multimeter on this pin of IC and see if it ends up negative voltage value or not. Now after replacing the probes, it is showing a positive 1.7 volts on this IC. These same voltages will move forward towards the IC operational channel number 1. This would increase the amplitude of the voltages. Let's check how much voltages do we get on pin number 1 of the IC. 3.4 DC volts is what we are getting on this pin of the IC as output. These voltages will move further to the microcontroller pin number 7. This is the pin number 7 of the microcontroller. 3.4 volts are passing on this pin of the microcontroller, which means these input voltages are reaching the microcontroller. These were the positive voltage, but it needs the ground to operate. These 3 volts also flow to this ground sense as well. Its number is BA2903F. This IC has 8 pins, the voltages go to channel number 1 of this ground sense IC, the 1 number pin of this IC is the output. The output of channel number 2 is pin number 7, the channel number 4 with pin 14 has also been grounded. So I will check the output on the ground sense IC, I will take the ground where we had taken it before, and this is the pin where we will get output voltages on this IC, it does not give any output voltages. If we check ground with ground, it's not showing the voltages. This means that this is the ground pin of the IC. I will have to check it with any positive voltages. I will attach the red probe here with the positive voltage pad. And let's check the voltages again. 302 volts are passing through this pin, which means we have attached the correct polarity. Now, this ground is reached towards the microcontroller pin 36. So let's check the ground voltages moving through the microcontroller. The multimeter is showing 15 volts. And if I change this probe with the other probe it is showing 303 volts here. This means that these input voltages are passing fine through the microcontroller. Now I will tell you how this microcontroller controls these voltages. I have installed this voltage regulator here. First we will check it at 220 voltages. So for that, I will take the voltage to 220. So let's check the voltages on pin 36 and pin 7 of the microcontroller. 3.4 volts we are getting here on these pins. So now I will reduce those voltages a bit because I have experienced on this Fujitsu circuit boards that it works up to 190 volts. Its circuit board does not operate at voltages below 190. The operational amplifier slightly reduces the amplitude of the voltages. 2.9 volts are now on these pins. The microcontroller knows that the voltages have been decreased. And now, I will lower the voltages further to 175 volts. Now let's check the voltages on these pins. The voltages have dropped further. At 2.7 volts, it will stop the circuit board from working and will give us a low voltage error. And so I will turn the voltages up. I turn it all the way up. The capacity of my voltage regulator is 260 volts. I set it to 260 volts. So now I check its voltages again and see if the voltages are high or low. So you can see that the multimeter is showing us 4 volts. So this means that when the voltages go above 4 volts, it will shut down the system and show the high voltage error. In this way, the AC voltage is controlled by a microcontroller with the help of this operational amplifier. This voltage detector is installed here, so let's check its voltages. The pin of this IC on the right side is not connected. The pin on the left side is its ground. The bottom pin on the right has an input voltage of 5 volts. The left pin on the bottom is the output. So first, I will check how many voltages are coming here. From here, I will take the ground and set the multimeter on DC voltages. So now I will take a look at its input voltages. Where I put this second probe is its input trace. Here, we are getting 5 volts. Now, if I check the voltages on the second pin, we are getting 5 volts here as well. After that, I will now check the voltages at pin 19 of the microcontroller, which is passing here. 5 volts are present here. The voltage detector voltages are also fine. I will now test the microcontroller's most important voltages that runs this microcontroller. Three pins in this microcontroller are VSS, called ground, and three pins are the important positive voltages which are the 5 volts. If any one of them is missing, the microcontroller will not work. The 14 number pin of the microcontroller is the VSS, which means it is attached to the ground. This is the 14 number pin of the microcontroller, and it is attached here with this point. With it, the next pin is the number 11. You can see this print here, and when I follow this print, it is attached with the 11 and 12 number pins of the microcontroller. 
Both of these pins have the important voltages of this microcontroller. So I will check the voltages within this point. Fix 5 volts are being reached here. This means the important voltages in two of the pins of the microcontroller are perfect. The next pin is the 24 pin, which is the ground pin. And this is the point of the pin. I will place the second probe on the point of pin number 56. 5 volts are also present across these pins. I am going to check this capacitor. This capacitor is used to stabilize the voltages of the microcontroller from any fluctuations. Let's check what the potential difference between capacitors is. 3.3 volts are passing across this capacitor. This means that the voltages that make the microcontroller work in this circuit board are also fine. Finally, I will test the current detection circuit. You can see here that two operational amplifiers are mounted. One is this, and the other is at the back of it. These two operational amplifiers detect the current and tell the microcontroller how much current is flowing in the circuit. I have already checked the resistances around these operational amplifiers. First of all, I will check pin number 8 of this operational amplifier to see how many voltages are present here. 15.3 volts are passing through this pin, which is fine. I will now check the voltages on its pin number 4. The voltages here are negative 9 volts, which means that it has been driven through negative voltages. The other operational amplifier is the same as this one, with 15 volts on the number 8 pin, and minus 9 volts on pin number 4. The output of this IC is really important. Pin number 1 is the output of this IC, so let's check it. We will take the ground from the old place. There are minor voltages here because as the current increases, so do the voltages, and now you can see here that 2.6 millivolts are coming up here, which is absolutely fine. Now, in the same way, let's check the other IC too. Both should have the same voltages. 2.6 millivolts are here as well. Now, the voltages of this current detection circuit are passed into the microcontroller and at its pin number 3. Let's check if these voltages are reaching this microcontroller. Yes, these voltages are reaching here. These voltages fluctuate a bit but are fine. As the current increases, the voltages in the circuit also increase, and the microcontroller knows how many amperes are flowing in the circuit. This is another Fujitsu air conditioner PCB that I repaired. In this clip, I tested the output voltages of the current detection IC that I will show you while the compressor is running. The compressor has started, and we see how many voltages are appearing at its output. The voltages have started to increase. The voltages have increased to 397 millivolts. Now I will check some more voltages, and after that, we will come to a conclusion about this circuit. So when all the inputs go to this microcontroller, first, it turns on this relay and passes voltages to this communication IC. So, in this circuit board, the relay is not turning on, and neither is this communication IC. So now I will check the outputs of this microcontroller to see whether it is sending it to this Darlington array or not. The customer sent me a video in which the AC timer light blinks twice, which means that this is a communication problem. The pin numbers 31 and 32 of the microcontroller. The 31 number turns on this relay, and the 32 number pin turns on this communication IC. This is a ULN 2003 IC, and the 31 number pin of the microcontroller is connected with the 5 number pin of this Darlington array. So let's check the voltages on the 5 number pin of this IC. 7.1 millivolts are passing through this pin, which is nothing. This pin should have 4 to 5 volts. This means the microcontroller is not turning on the output. The next pin is 32, which is attached to the Darlington array pin number 2. So, let's check the voltages here on this pin. 7.2 millivolts are passing through this pin as well. This means that the microcontroller cannot pass output to the relay and the communication IC, due to which the problem is caused. The rest of the components in this circuit are working. But the microcontroller in spite of the proper input voltages, is dead at its output. This circuit board can't be repaired, and I have no other microcontroller that I could replace with this bad one. You can support the channel on Patreon, link in the description. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.